Hey you guys, Majo up here, and welcome to the fourth video in our Java 2D game engine program series. And today we're going to be doing uh, input, which is very important to a game. How is the user going to uh, interact with the game if you don't have input? So we're going to make a new class right, right in here, and I'm going to call it uh, capital I input. Boom, we got input. So now I'm going to make a constructor for my input. And we're going to need to implement some classes so that we can get input from a canvas, right? So we're going to implement three whole classes. We're going to implement a key listener to listen for key, keyboard inputs, put a comma, mouse listener to listen for listener to listen for button presses on the mouse, and mouse motion listener to get the movement of the mouse so we know where the mouse is <clears throat> and we might as well do one more and that is the mouse wheel listener which is for the scroll wheel and we're going to control shift o and import all of that and now we're going to go to input and i'm going to add unimplemented methods which is going to be a lot and now we have all these methods i'm going to go through and edit them to get rid of the stupid to do and change it from arg0 to e because I just like I like having e it's an event right so it should be e let me get rid of that change it to e get rid of that change it to e get rid of that change it to e the override can stay I don't mind the override but I don't like all this to do here change them all to e Oop. and then boop, boop. And lastly, now we're not going to be using all these uh, methods, but they're required to implement the, the classes. So let's make, we need a, a way of telling if a key is down, right? Because the way the keyboard works, if you notice, if you press H, it types it and then it spams it. Now, if you were to get that input directly, right, it would say H and then it, it would pause. So if you were to say like in a game, and you're trying to run to the right and you hit D, your guy would move slightly and then after a slight pause, he would then keep going right. Well, we need to gap that pause. So, what a best way to do that is with a boolean. So when you press D, it'll it'll make it true and it won't be fault and it'll make it false when you let go. It's the best way to do it. So, we're going to make a private boolean. Right? Now we can't just have one boolean for every key, so we gotta make a boolean for every key. So I'm gonna make a boolean array, and I'm gonna call it keys, and I'm gonna set equal to a new boolean array. Now how big is this array gonna be? Uh, a standard keyboard has 256 keys on it, so we're gonna go for 256. If you have some crazy keyboard with weird keys on it, it'll cause problems, but we're just gonna... We'll put an if statement in to stop it. Now, I'm hard coding in this number. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to make a private final int uh, num keys. So we have our number of keys. We'll store it. Oh, geez. I just scrolled all the way down the page. Take our number of keys and put it here. Now it's a, a nice little number. So I'm going to copy this because we have our keys. But if we want to know if a key was pressed in the last frame or this frame, we need to have information from the previous frame. So we can do a key up, key down, and not just is the key pressed or not. So we're also going to have a keys last. So that'll be the last frame. What were, what were the keys on the last frame? And now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do the exact same thing. But instead of number of keys, it's going to be number of buttons. And I'm gonna do five buttons. If you have you have mouse zero, mouse one and two, which is left click, middle click, right click, and maybe a back and a forward if you have those buttons on your mouse. So that should be five. If you have any more of those, we probably shouldn't, but we'll we'll, we'll put an if statement in to make sure that we don't go outside of our array. So we'll have our buttons and our buttons last, and we need to use the buttons here. And there we go. So now we have our buttons. Now we need to know the location of the mouse. And in order to do that, we're going to have an int. And I'm going to call it mouse x and a mouse y. And I'm going to make this private. I don't want this to be public. That'll be how we get our, uh, our location of our mouse. 
And then we'll also have a private, um, we need a scroll wheel. So I'm gonna call it int scroll. And it'll be one if we're scrolling up, zero if we're not scrolling at all, and negative one if we're scrolling down. I might have that backwards, it might be negative one scrolling up. But that's how the scroll wheel works. Okay. Also, I, th I think you can do it like, it'll be like positive 10 or something if you scroll real fast or something. So, it, it, positive or negative depending on the direction of the scroll. Now, we have all of our needed variables. Actually, I'm going to store one more just because I'm actually going to store the game container here. Just because if it changes, I'm not sure how I'm going to set this up later. So, I'm going to just do this now. And when, when we start our input, we're going to pass the game container, and we're just going to store the game container here, because this might not be necessary, but I'm going to do it now, just in case it is. Now, we have our input. Everything is initialized already, except for our mouse X and mouse Y. I might as well initialize that. We can do it down here. Scroll equals zero. That's pretty good. So, now we need to take this input class and we need to attach it to our canvas and the way we get our canvas is uh, gc that get window that get canvas remember we made that getter last video and we're going to add a key listener this and we're gonna copy and paste this four times boom 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 and this is a uh, mouse motion listener this is a uh, mouse listener <laughs> I forgot I skipped the mouse listener and this is mouse wheel listener boom so now we've added our listener to our canvas very simple now we need to have an update method which is going to update it so it's going to take our current input and store it into our last input so I'm just gonna make a simple for loop right here it's going to be less than number of keys, i plus plus, and I'm going to say keys last i is equal to our keys standard. Now this is going to be called at the end of our frame. So we're going to take our frames input and store it into our last frame input. All right? And then I'm going to copy this and do the same thing for the buttons. So this will be num buttons. It should be buttons last is equal to buttons boom and that's all we need for our update method now let's actually put uh, the stuff into our imported methods so I'm gonna go down here to key pressed because I like to start a key pressed so if we press a key right our keys we're going to get the key code which is our event so our e dot get key code so what key did we press and we're gonna set it equal to true and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to copy this and paste it here in the key released. And I'm going to set it equal to false. Alrighty. Now, we need to do the same thing for mouse press. So, buttons e.getButton is equal to true. And we'll copy and paste that into mouse release. I'm going to set it equal to false. So there you go. Now, we have mouse moved and mouse dragged. Both of these can occur. So if you move the mouse without clicking, this activates. If you move the mouse while clicking, this activates. So uh, we don't really care about dragging. Uh, so we're going to actually put this the same code into both methods. So I'm gonna say mouse x is equal to, we need this to be an int, but it's going to be e.get x divided by gc.get scale. Now that is important because the scale of our window actually does matter because uh, otherwise we're not going to, it's not going to match up to our resolution. So if our resolution is 320 by 240, but our actual window is like three times that, well, this mouse uh, e dot get x will get a location that's three times our resolution, but we want it to be in the same scale as our resolution. So we're doing that. And our mouse y equals int e dot get y divided by gc dot get scale. Now there is a problem with this in that it doesn't actually take into consideration uh, the width and height of our boundaries of our window frame. 
So I need to do that real quick. So I'm going to add on to this frame dot and that frame should be GC dot get window dot get need the frame. If I remember properly. Uh, oop, and you go to window. I'm going to make a getter for the frame. So I'm going to frame get frame. Boom. Render bear. At least I think this is necessary. Last time I did this, it was necessary. So, get frame that get not alignment. Uh, da, 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 da. it should be the bounds, not the bounds. Da, 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 da. Where is it at? I'm trying to remember where it is. Scrolling through all of our methods here, it is one of the. Hmm. Key listener on height. Hmm. Cursor type default go location. It might not be necessary. I think it's already in the proper size. I'm trying to remember. There was a part where I actually needed the width and height of the actual uh, top of it. So like you see up here where it says the name of the thing that actually adds height to the frame. I don't think it's necessary. We'll, we'll test it out and see if it is necessary. For some reason in my head, I'm, re I'm remembering a time when I needed that. But I don't know if it's necessary now, but so we're just going to copy and paste this in the mouse dragged and that'll be fine. All right. Boom. Uh, oh, wait, no, that was that's for for one of the move the mouse. OK, yeah, we don't need it for this part. Well, we need it if we do something else like locking the mouse to the screen. That's what I'm thinking of. But we're not going to be locking the mouse to the screen because that doesn't really make sense for a 2D game to lock the mouse to the screen. I mean, you can. We can also hide the cursor as well, but uh, we might do that. We'll see. So mouse wheel moved. So if we're moving our mouse wheel, I'm just going to say scroll is equal to e dot get uh, wheel rotation. Boom. And that that's that's an easy one to do right there. And I think we've set everything up. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to uh, source getters and setters, and I'm going to get a getter. We don't need setters for any of this. I'm going to get the mouse X, get the mouse Y. Um, that's all I need right now. Get X, get Y. All right. So now we have our getters down here. And we're going to actually put in the actual methods uh, for getting input. So I'm like a public boolean uh, is key. Now, uh, there's the thing with like... Uh, when you're like getting a boolean, like a getter for a boolean, it's usually you start with is. So is key is, this is a boolean function. If you were to say get key, that key would be a variable, but is key, that tells you that it's a boolean. So is key, and I'm going to give it a key code. So int key code. So is this key down? So I'm just gonna return keys, key code. That's it's easy, super easy. All right. And we'll copy this two times because we need two methods. So next one is is key up, and the next one is is key down. Now key up is did we just release it? So in the last frame the key was pressed, but in the current frame the key is not. So that would be a key up. So what we need so the current frame the key is not pressed. So return not keys and keys last right so it'll return it's not down in the current frame but it was down in the last frame so it's a key up key down is the exact opposite it is down in this frame but it was not down in the last frame so we need key last with an exclamation point in it so boom and we need to do the same thing for button and we'll copy this paste it and rename is button. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing for up. Oop. Down. And uh, this should be buttons. Buttons, buttons, buttons. Buttons last. Copy, paste. And I'm going to change this from key code to button. So we're going to paste that there. There. Oop there everything should be nice and renamed now so we have our buttons is all buttons and our keys all keys boom 
And that is all of the getters we'll need, all the methods we'll need for this right now. We might add some more later. So we're going to go to game container, and I'm going to test this out. So we'll have our start. Now this is uh, where we'd put our game loop, but we don't have a game yet. So I'm just going to type the code in here directly. And I'm going to say, so, we, oh yeah, we need to actually add the input to the game container because we haven't done that yet. So we need to add a uh, private input, input. And we'll initialize our input and start. Input equals new input. This. And what's going to happen here is when our game updates, we want to update uh, input uh, update as the last part at the end. So I'm going to say if input uh, uh, is key, right? We're just going to do a simple one. And now to get a key code, you could look it up. I think A is 56. But there's already a class in Java that has all the key codes in it. So you could just type in key event dot vk underscore and then whatever key you need. I'm going to do A. Alright. And we need to import key event. And I'm just going to simply type uh, system dot out dot print line. Alright. A is pressed. And that's going to be a simple test of our method so let's do that so if i press a a is pressed right and if i hold it it just spams it and that works very well let's test our key up so we type key up we run it if i press a nothing happens but when i let go it says a is pressed so it only does it when i let go makes sense and down is the exact opposite and it works when you press it but only once. So I press A, and it says A is pressed, and I'm holding it down, but nothing happens, and I let it go, nothing happens. It only does it when I press it. Boom. And we can test our buttons, which button is a bit weird. So if we have our button, it's not a key event, but a mouse event, that button one, that is your left click. Or it's, it should be just zero, but it's useful to do that. So if I press left click, it works. All right. So, and it's the same uh, thing for the up and down. So that should still work. And our scroll, let's get our scroll. So I'm just going to not even have an if statement here for a scroll. But instead, I'm just going to print out the scroll, which will spam a little bit. But I'm just going to say input... Uh, get scroll all right so if i click here it's zero if i scroll up it's negative one and i scroll down it's one makes sense right so yeah it is it was reverse of what i said earlier now the problem is actually is when i scroll up it stays negative one that's something we forgot to count for so in our update i'm just going to say scroll equals zero so every frame it should reset to zero there we go. So it doesn't just stay negative one or one if we uh, do that. So there we go. Simple fix. And let's make sure our mouse uh, X and Y make sense, right? So let's go X plus input dot get mouse X plus a space Y colon plus input get mouse Y. And we're going to go here. And we see our X and Y location of our mouse, and that works perfectly fine. And it's in with scale of our actual window. So up here in the top left corner is 0, 0. And down in the very bottom whoop, is 320 by 240. Boom. Actually goes a little bit lower than that. But that's okay. It's, it's off because of the scale. The scale can really affect it. The lower the resolution, the less accurate it's going to be the more the more one to one if the scale is one then it'll be very accurate but if it's off it's not going to be that accurate so yeah our input is now done thank you for watching comment rate, subscribe and i'll see you guys next time